Hello everybody, it's Pastor Nick here. Happy Monday again. And uh, today we are in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 through chapter 13 and verse 14. So today we finish 2 Corinthians. And uh, in chapter 12, uh, it begins with Paul describing his rapture to the, th to the third heaven. Uh, this occurred 14 years earlier and was before his missionary journeys began. He says that he does not know if he was in his body or out of his body, uh, but that God does know. Uh, Paul says that he cannot utter the things which he saw and heard. Uh, it was not lawful for him to speak of this in detail. Uh, this would come later when John, the apostle, would be told to write down the revelation. But Paul, uh, it's assumed that Paul saw many of the same things that John did. He just wasn't able to write about him because he didn't have permission from God. Uh, Paul essentially was saying again, I have things to glory in and to brag about, but instead I glory in my infirmities. And he writes here about this thorn in the flesh and how he prayed and prayed for the Lord to remove it from him. Uh, God's answer was not what many people want to hear. Uh, God revealed to him that his grace is sufficient and his strength is made perfect in weakness. The infirmities show our weaknesses and Christ's power and strength through them. Uh, when we are weak, God's power can be unfolded in our lives. So the result is that we don't glory in ourselves, but we glory in him. And Paul concludes this letter by asking them to be ready for him when he comes. In other words, Paul didn't want to come to them and have to rebuke them to their face. Uh, that is why he was writing this letter to them. He was praying that they would change their behavior before he got there uh, and so that their time together would be sweet instead of bitter. At this time, we're looking at Proverbs 23, verses 4 to 11. Uh, again, we see uh, these chunks here, if you would, uh, verses 4 and 5. In these verses, we see that we should not chase after wealth, but after wisdom. It says that riches, they grow wings. Uh, they're here, and then they fly away. Uh, in verses 6 to 8, uh, these verses warn against the greedy man. Uh, he may make you a meal and seem generous, but inwardly he is counting the cost. Uh, this may cause the guests to feel sick when they find out the man's true intentions and heart. Verses 6 to 8 about this greedy man, you compare that to verses 1 to 3 about that king uh, or ruler that provides you something. And uh, so we have to be careful. Uh, verse 9, uh, this verse deals with a foolish person. Uh, don't waste your time speaking words of wisdom to them because they won't hear what you're saying. You're wasting your time. And finally, verses 10 and 11, uh, do not move the landmarks of others, but especially widows and the fatherless or orphans. God will protect them and you will have to answer to him. Uh, this really deals with stealing somebody else's land, uh, moving the landmark, moving the marker. Um, and uh, in so doing, you're stealing what belongs to them. Uh, don't do that. Don't take advantage of uh, the widow and fatherless. Uh, earlier we learned, uh, do not take advantage of the poor um, uh, last week. And so uh, God is watching, and we must remember that. Let's bow our heads. I want to for God, thank you for this day, Lord. Help us this week. Help us to stay focused upon you and to do the things that you've called us to do. Lord, we love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.